thousands of men succumb to an issue every single year that will end the most exciting events way too quickly. But men, I am here to tell you, there's nothing to be ashamed of. If we are willing to have an open and honest conversation, I can help you get through this. The main event has started. You're excited. You're sweating a little bit. Your heart's racing. And just like that, it's over. That is what premature drafting of quarterbacks and tight ends will do to you in any given season. Your draft may just get started, but it will be over before it gets to be any fun. So in this episode of the Fantasy Headliners, I'm going to help you get through this premature drafting issue and try to help you understand how you can extend those fun times all the way through your season. Headliner Nation, what's going on? Kyle back with the Fantasy Headliners. And if someone comes up to you today and says, man, do you got a case of the Mondays? Say, heck yeah, I got a case of the Mock Draft Mondays. Love this day here on the channel. Because once again, we are going to be talking about another strategy that you can implement in your Mock Drafts to get ready for your Fantasy Football Drafts this year. This is an issue that I see all the time, though. And if you've been subscribed to the Fantasy Headliners, you already know that one of the things that we preach here over and over is drafting value at the quarterback position. Don't use an early round pick on quarterbacks because it can mess with your lineup later on in the draft. So once again, I have enlisted the help of our MVP subscribers over on Patreon to do a mock draft with me so I can show you some of the dangers of drafting quarterbacks and tight ends way too early in your draft but before we jump into that information just want to let everybody know make sure that you catch our live show tonight the 10th of august at 9 p.m if you're watching this when the video drops on monday we will be live tonight at 9 p.m so make sure you come back and check out that live show if you are watching this video after monday the live show has already happened but that's okay you can go back and check it out for yourself as well it just won't be live, of course. So let's talk a little bit about mock drafts when it comes to quarterbacks and tight ends and see if this is a strategy that you actually should be implementing this year or one that you should be bypassing. All right, let's take a look at the first round and start breaking down some of these picks a little bit more. As you can see there, we've got a 12 team league going on here 12 team mock draft it is half ppr one quarterback two running backs three wide receivers one tight end and two flex positions now in this league we're not doing any kickers we're not doing any defense and we've only got four bench spots it just helps speed the draft up a little bit so we can talk about it in this video so as you can see the spot that i ended up taking in this draft was the 10 hole And the very first person that I end up taking is Joe Mixon in the 10th spot. Now, knowing going into this that my goal was to draft a quarterback and a tight end early, I said to myself, I'm going to want a running back in the first round. And I still feel like this is the best choice that you can make this season. Now, coming up in a few days, I am going to be dropping an early round draft strategy video talking about all of the running backs that are kind of going in the late first to mid second, because there are a lot of questions about those guys right now. And for me, Joe Mixon is the highest of some of those guys because I've got him at running back four right now because I'm expecting a huge season from him. So because I know that I'm going running back, or excuse me, that I'm going quarterback and tight end early, I said, you know what? Give me my bell cow running back here in the first, so then I don't have to really worry about trying to grab a guy like that later on, because in round two, I end up going with Patrick Mahomes. If you're wanting to draft Patrick Mahomes or Lamar Jackson this year, you are going to have to take them in round two. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. It is going to have to happen. Now, Lamar Jackson is my QB2 this year, so I went with Patrick Mahomes at QB1. I love Lamar Jackson. 
He has tons of upside. But Patrick Mahomes, to me, is just a little bit safer. So I'm going to be taking Patrick Mahomes. If I'm going to spin a quarterback pick this early, I'm going to do it with the guy that I deem to be safest at the position, and I'm going to go with Patrick Mahomes. Now you can see some wide receivers start to come off the board here in the second round as well. Nothing really surprising. Clyde Edwards-Alaire going in the late second, which... Doesn't surprise me actually that much in this draft because these are our Patreon members here at the Fantasy Headliners, and they, for the majority, agree with us that Clyde Edwards Alaire going in the end of the first round or mid first round is absolutely insane, and they're not going to be caught doing it either. So, taking him there towards the back half of the second round, still a little bit too early for me, but you know what? That is a lot better, especially when you pair him with a guy like Dalvin Cook. That is a pretty high end offense to start off with a lot of ceiling there for those guys a lot of risk though in my opinion so let's go on to the third round we hit that turn in the third round now fubar bill murray up in the number one spot longtime subscriber of the fantasy headliners he decided to go back to back tight ends i asked him about it and he basically said let's get frisky that's what he was saying okay he wanted to see how it would work out taking a couple of tight ends so he could play one in the tight end position and one in the flex position, seeing as you had two flex spots. So because I knew in my mind that I was going to be doing a late, or excuse me, an early quarterback and tight end video, at the end of the third round, I decided to go with Mark Andrews. Mark Andrews is now my tight end two on the season. I did a video for must-have tight ends a couple of weekends ago, or a couple weeks ago, Uh, it might have been early last week, But it's got Mark Andrews on the cover of that. So when you're done watching this video, if you want more information about Mark Andrews, you can go to that. But what I can tell you about Mark Andrews is he had about half of the snaps as Travis Kelsey did last year, and he put up some fantastic numbers. So with Hayden Hurst being gone now, the volume for Mark Andrews is going to become higher, more opportunity if he stays efficient. We're looking at a pretty big year coming for Mark Andrews. So that's why I go with him as my tight end one and take him in the third round what do i do here at the turn in the fourth round well i end up going with odell beckham jr there were a couple of thought process when i get here to the fourth round now i can either go with a wide receiver or a running back but who is going to have the most upside for me and some of the guys that were sitting there are some of the guys that you see here taken in the end of the round Devin Singletary was one guy that I was like, I'm really conflicted. OBJ, Devin Singletary, OBJ, Devin Singletary. OBJ has more upside for me. So I'm going to go ahead and take my true wide receiver one right now. I'm going to have a few picks before it gets back to me. I'm not going to mind some of the guys going there. But wide receivers are probably going to start to go really, really quick. My hope was is that because people had spent so many picks on uh, running backs already, that some of those uh, running back picks that you see here towards the end of the fourth round were going to end up being wide receivers instead, and it could push some guys back to me, like a DeAndre Swift or a David Montgomery. Those were kind of the guys that I was thinking about. So I say, you know what? I'm going to go with Odell Beckham Jr. here, and I am going to take him as my wide receiver one, a lot of upside, more upside than some of these running backs coming up. So I'm going to go ahead and roll with him here. Now, I will say something. You see there uh, in the fifth spot, say maybe to Rojo, I don't don't give him too much grief. He fell asleep. He had been working a long night shift. He got home, decided to try a mock draft with us, and fell asleep and went on auto draft. So don't give him too much grief for taking so many running backs to start. He probably wouldn't have done that. He would have been more balanced. Um, but, you know, it happens. It happens from time to time. But I don't want you giving him too much grief in the comments. Anyway, let's move on to the fifth round now. And this is where I was like, oh, man, really getting screwed over here. So we get into the fourth round, and the the picks are coming back my way. My next pick, after I see Chris Carson go, DeAndre Swift, David Montgomery, Devin Singletary, all these guys off the board, I'm looking at it, and I'm saying, okay, I don't love James White as my running back, too. I would much rather have him as my running back three, a guy that I can play in the flex every single week. So you know what? I can probably go ahead and get him in the sixth round. Boom, gone. Nope, I can't get him in the sixth round because he goes in the fifth round. So then I'm like, okay, he comes off the board. It comes back to me. I'm like, I really need another running back right now. Joe Mixon is my only running back. 
There's a couple of guys that I see coming up. Jordan Howard is one that I can spend a pick on. I can probably get him here at the turn in the six and then take Ronald Jones in the seventh. Or I could do it vice versa. I could take Ronald Jones in the six and then take Jordan Howard in the seventh. So I decide, you know what? I'm going to go with Devontae Parker. Now, we haven't liked Devontae Parker all offseason until recently. Albert Wilson has opted out. Okay, That was a big-time opt-out for this team. We're losing some wide receivers in Miami. And, of course, Preston Williams, who we like, who we thought was going to take some of the volume towards Devontae Parker, is not fully healthy, ready to go in week one yet. He's not bad. He should be ready, but could he possibly be limited? So now Devontae Parker's ADP is a little bit more of a value to me. I can take him in the fifth round as my wide receiver too. Gives me a little bit of an upside to go with Odell Beckham Jr. I might as well go with it here now. Go with a couple of guys that probably at worst are wide receiver twos, and I get him in the fourth and the fifth round. And then right after that, Jordan Howard goes, and I'm just, I'm ready to fight. Okay, I'm ready to throw fists with our MVP members. Not really. I love them all over there. But Jordan Howard goes in the fifth round, and I was like, you know what? I'm really, really proud of you all right now. I love you all, but I hate you. Because seeing this pick lets me know that people are listening. They don't care about Jordan Howard's ADP. They're going to get him in a spot that they feel comfortable with because they like Jordan Howard this year. I like Jordan Howard this year. I get it. And I told them all, I said, honestly, I feel like a big brother that has taught my younger brother how to hit on girls. But now he started hitting on my girl and took her from me. Okay, that's how it feels to me. I'm super proud because the kid's got game. However, he's working his game on my girl. I don't like that. Okay, I don't like that. But it's fun to see. So we go on to the sixth round now. And I end up having to take Ronald Jones, okay? And I know, I know, say no to Rojo. Jake hates a pick. I absolutely get it, and I understand all of the reasons why. But at this point in the draft, Ronald Jones is like the one guy sitting out here at running back where I'm like, he's kind of got the front line to being the number one running back. Everybody else at this point is really like flex considerations, guys that are going to be like in a battle that could really be split, even worse than that. I mean, Cam Akers is still there. Daryl Henderson isn't just going to go away. That offensive line is absolutely awful in L.A. We haven't seen anything from Cam Akers yet. It's a short offseason. Uh, you're not getting any rookie camp. You're not getting pre- – I mean, all of these things are coming into play when I'm looking at Cam Akers. So I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to go Ronald Jones here because I have got to have a running back too. And ladies and gentlemen, this right here is a prime example as to why drafting quarterbacks and tight ends early in your draft can cause a lot of headaches later on. Because what you really have to do, if you are using a second and a third round pick on a quarterback and a tight end, at that point, you're really limiting the options that you're going to be getting at running back. And later on in your draft, the rest of your draft is going to be spent doing what ifs at the position. What happens if I draft him? What happens if I draft him? Now, fantasy football is always what ifs, but it's a lot easier in this instance. I could have taken Joe Mixon, and then if I really wanted to, I could have gone with a CEH there, right? I could have done that if I really wanted to. I could have also gone with a Todd Gurley, who I don't mind whatsoever, If I really didn't want to do that, then I could have taken a wide receiver there. I could have went with like a Devontae Adams or a Kenny Galladay. And then in round three, I could have taken David Johnson there. David Johnson, I don't mind him as a running back too. He's coming up on a video next week. I like David Johnson this year. Third round value for him is not bad given what he could end up producing for you. And that is part of the issues with drafting these quarterback and tight ends way too early in your draft. Because now you're looking at it, hey, back in the sixth round, I could have gotten Dak Prescott there. Would you rather have like Joe Mixon, Devontae Adams, and Dak Prescott, or Joe Mixon, Patrick Mahomes, and Ronald Jones? And that's exactly why this strategy can really, really leave you thin and cause a lot of issues throughout the entire season. Okay, so keep that in mind as we're talking about this. So let's go ahead and move on to round seven. Coming back through the turn, and I take Will Fuller. Why not? I got a couple of guys right now at wide receiver that have some upside, 
But let's add some more upside there. And Will Fuller is one guy that could have just as much upside as almost any wide receiver this year in football. The main thing is he's just got to be healthy. If he's healthy and on the field, he produces. There has never been an issue with Will Fuller producing when he's healthy. It's always been the injuries. So I decided to go with Will Fuller because at this point, my running backs are scaring me a little bit. I need to get as much upside as possible at the rest of the positions and then worry about drafting some crap shoots at, at uh, running back a little bit later on. At this point, I need to maximize points because I could be in an issue every single week where my running backs underperform outside of Joe Mixon. That guy's not going to underperform. Huge year incoming. But a guy like Ronald Jones. What if Ronald Jones ends up losing his job and he's not the starter there? Things like that. Okay, So I need to maximize the points at my other positions. I've maximized the points at quarterback. Maximize the points at tight end. Let's maximize the points at wide receiver because I can start three. And let's move on to the eighth round now where I decide to go with Adrian Peterson. Now, this draft really happened like right after Darius Geis um, ended up being cut due to domestic violence issues. So, because of that, Adrian Peterson's ADP has not started to climb at all, but you can see there in the round prior, at the eighth pick in the seventh round, Antonio Gibson went off the board. Antonio Gibson is going to be overdrafted this year now that Darius Geis is gone. So be careful with Antonio Gibson. Again, we are concerned. No rookie camp. A weird training camp. No preseason games, okay? These rookies that are coming in are going to have to adjust on the fly. It's going to cause some issues. So I'm going to go with the veteran. I'm going to go with AP because AP is going to get carries early on. It's absolutely going to happen. There is nothing showing that AP is going to get out-snapped by Antonio Gibson. Another guy to keep an eye on on that roster, though, Bryce Love. Keep an eye out for him. He's going to be coming up on a video this week as well. So let's go ahead and move out of the eighth round. Some of these teams are looking really, really good. My man, Matt St. G, there right in the middle of the draft, had an absolutely fantastic draft through these rounds. I mean, he nails Nick Chubb in the first round, Kenny Galladay in the second round. Don't love Mark Ingram, but he gets a decent value in the third round. Devin Singletary is excellent after that. Then gets Terry McLaurin, huge upside. Brandon Cooks, huge upside. Latavius Murray is his running back four. If anything happens to Alvin Kamara, mature, uh, Murray is a guy that definitely can play that position well and be a least, at least a high running back two. And then Matt Ryan is his quarterback one. And again, these guys that are deciding to go quarterback late, look what they did early on with their picks. And then you get a guy like Matt Ryan, okay? Even right before that, Drew Brees going there right before Matt Ryan as well, or excuse me, right after Matt Ryan. Both guys that you can get later on. Now, I will say this too. Unfortunately, the gentleman right before Matt St. G timed out, and Darius Geis, because of his ADP, came off the board. So again, mark that out of there. Pretend that didn't happen. Don't comment on it. Accidents happen. So here in this round, again, I'm now looking at running backs. Okay, because at this point, I'm drafting from behind. I have told you in previous videos, you don't ever want to be drafting from behind. You want to be the aggressor in your fantasy football drafts. You want to make people need to draft positions. You do not want to feel like you need to draft positions. And because I went quarterback and tight end so early, I felt the need to have to draft running back, and it caused issues later on. I mean, I end up getting Adrian Peterson here, and I'm thinking to myself, I would love to get, like, Tariq Cohen in the next round. That doesn't end up happening, okay? He ends up bypassing me. I don't end up getting him. We move on to the next round, and I end up going with a guy that's kind of the best available at that point. Henry Ruggs, another high upside wide receiver that I can play either at wide receiver or in my flex position. The one thing about Ruggs, I don't think he's going to have a huge season, but I think he can have some big games against weak defenses, especially if they end up using him in the slot quite often like they're talking about. So we'll see what happens with Henry Ruggs out of the slot, but high upside pick this late in the draft. And then after that, I decide to go with Keyshawn Vaughn. I end up taking Vaughn because I have Ronald Jones. And you know what? If Ronald Jones loses his job, it's probably going to be to Keyshawn Vaughn. No, it's not going to be to LaShawn McCoy. So don't even comment with that down below because I'm going to just ignore that nonsense. Keyshawn Vaughn 
is the guy that is most likely to take touches away from Ronald Jones. So you know what? If Ronald Jones screws the pooch, which more than likely he'll end up doing at some point in time, I've got Vaughn to back him up now. And then again, because I'm feeling like I have to draft running backs now, I end up drafting Zach Moss here. Maybe not that bad, but Devin Singletary is the man there. Zach Moss is going to get some touchdowns. He's going to get some goal line and short yardage work, but he is not going to keep Devin Singletary from being a really good option for fantasy owners this year. And his injury profile coming out of college is horrendous. It is so bad. I don't want to risk it. But this late in the draft, I need a little bit of depth at the position because I'm so weak at the top. I end up going with him just in case something were to happen to Devin Singletary. And then in the 12th round, I'm running with Anthony Miller. I really like Anthony Miller. He's going to be coming up on a video shortly as well. Anthony Miller is a guy that I would really like to have my hands on this year. He is a guy that I'm more and more excited about. I've always really liked Anthony Miller. And this year, I was like, I don't know if I can trust that Bears offense. But we've talked about it quite a bit on Straight Chubb, our podcast over on Patreon. Um and we've talked about the Bears a little bit, and, and I've come to like him more and more and more. So what do I do with my final pick of the draft? Because, again, this is a shorter draft. We only did four bench spots. No kickers, no defenses, just so we can get through the information for you. I go with Devonta Freeman. Why not? Let's go ahead and add him right now. Who knows? Maybe somebody does end up picking him up before the season starts. So I take a hypothetical draft pick here to grab him and see what would happen with him. More than likely, you would still end up having some more draft spots after this. And that's where I would end up getting like maybe a quarterback two, a tight end two, defense at that point, kickers. But I'm not taking those guys early either. So there you have it. Some really good teams here. Matt St. G, like I said to him, really, really like that team there. Lior Colton up there, one of our writers here at the Fantasy Headliners. Not a bad start for him either. I kind of like that draft when he got started there all the way down through Cortland Sutton in the seventh round. Not bad. Talked about Fubar Bill Murray already. Um, looking through the rest of these. Talked with Josh a little bit. Kelly Kid Josh there, just a couple of spots before me. Talked to him about a little bit, and he wanted feedback. And the one thing I said about his draft is that your running back one is Jonathan Taylor, who might not get started right away. And then James White is also another concern for me as your running back two. I like him as running back three or four. Running back two is eh, a little spicy for me. But again, same thing happened with Josh that happened with me. He spent an early draft pick on Lamar Jackson when if he would have skipped over Lamar Jackson, he could have had like an Aaron Jones, a Clyde Edwards-Hilaire, a Todd Gurley. You could have had all of those guys there instead, but he couldn't do that because he went with Lamar Jackson, and that can make things more difficult for you later on in your draft. So there you have it, Headliner Nation. Another Mock Draft Monday in the books. Don't forget, do me a favor, down in the comments below, let me know what you're thinking. Are you going to be taking a quarterback early or a tight end early this year? How early would you take them? If not, who are you targeting a little bit later in your drafts? So hit that like button for me, comment down below, and of course, if you are new here to the Fantasy Headliners, hit that subscribe button and become a part of Headliner Nation today. Everybody out there, stay safe, stay healthy. We're only about five Saturdays, well, four Saturdays now, four Sundays away from football. So it is getting really close. Amp up, everybody. Get ready to draft your teams, and let's have a successful 2020 season. I'll catch you all on the next episode. Have a good one.